Alright, for my read aloud, I decided to read Gollum by David Winooski. Within the beautiful city of Prague, fierce hatreds have raged for thousands of years. People of differing beliefs in God and nation have clashed violently here. Czech against German, Protestant against Catholic, and Christian against Jew. In the year 1580, the Jews of Prague were bearing the ignorant fury of others. Enemies had accused them of mixing, or accused them of mixing the blood of Christian children with the flour and water of matzo, the unleavened Passover bread. This blood lie incited angry mobs of great cruelty against the Jews. Pinned in their walled ghetto, forbidden to use weapons or the protection of law, the Jews could do nothing to stop the vicious falsehood. Now, a question I would ask more of, like, a high school class would be, how do you think the Jews feel being falsely accused of these crimes, and do you think that they would have actually done those crimes? Judah Lo ben Bezalel, chief rabbi of Prague, knew the violence lay ahead. Deeply troubled, he entered his study too fast to fast and pray for the deliverance of his people. He fell into restless slumber and dreamed of fire and ruin. When all seemed lost, a hand of light appeared and wrote one glowing word upon smoke and ashes, Gollum. Where do you think that these words came from, and do you think that it was a gift from the gods that the rabbi asked for? And that will be another question I would ask more of older adults instead of children. Rabbi Lowe woke with a start. Gollum was a giant of living animated by Kabbalah, mystical teachings of untold power. Only the most righteous man, a tzaddik, <laughs> could create and control such a creature. Was this the heavenly answer he sought? Rising from his desk, the rabbi peered into the night, shouted curses and drunken threats hurtled over the ghetto walls like stones. He decided it must be so. And then I would ask, do you think that the rabbi made the right decision trying to summon something like this? And what do you think he will try to do with it? And that would be a question kind of more for the junior high, middle school level, I guess. A little bit easier of a question. In the morning, Rabbi Lowe sent for his son-in-law, Yitzhak Cohen and his best student, Yaakov Sassoon. He explained the dream and asked their help. As a divine name, the Hashem created us through words, so we must create Gollum, he said. Now pray and purify yourselves, for, the night, for this night we must use the holy name of God. How do you feel that the rabbi dragged in his son-in-law, and also one of his best students, into creating this force of power that he is planning to use. And for that, I would ask, uh, pretty much for any age level between junior high and high school, a little bit older. When darkness fell, the three men left the ghetto through a secret opening in the wall. They hurried along the forbidden avenues of Prague to the cold clay banks of the river Vltava. Izak and Yaakov began to dig. By midnight, an enormous mound of clay lay before the rabbi. Praying softly, he plunged his hands into the vast lump, shaping it. Hours later, he arose and stood back. A crude clay giant lay lifeless on the riverbank. Raising his arms, Rabbi Lo chanted Zerufim, mighty spells from Kabbalah. The word soared aloft and unleashed the power of life itself. As lightning strikes iron and flashes to earth, so the infinite energy of creation blazed through the rabbi into the coarse clay. And then, I guess for younger children, I would just ask the open question, 
what do you think would happen next? Staggering, the rabbi lifted his arms higher and uttered the holy name. Howling wind and torrential rain lashed down. Writhing columns of steam shrieked from the figure. Itzhak and Yaakov gripped each other in terror. And then I would ask, how do you think that Itzhak and Yaakov feel in this situation, not knowing the true power of what's happening? And I would ask that for uh, kind of like a middle age level, a middle school level. When the tumult cease, the three men advance over the hissing ground. There, wreathed in vapor, lay a giant man, complete and perfect. The rabbi knelt and engraved the word, and met truth upon the creature's forehead. Instantly, the giant's chest expanded like bellows. A deep breath shuddered from his lips. Gollum commanded the rabbi, awake. Gollum's eyes opened, murky and unblinking. Father, his great voice rumbled. Was this wise to do? We shall know soon enough, answered Rabbi Lil. Now stand. Wrap this cloak around yourself and follow us. In the darkness before dawn, for return to the ghetto. Rabbi Lil led Gollum to the attic above his study. You have been created for one reason, said the rabbi, to protect the Jews. Do you understand? Yes, said Gollum. You will guard the ghetto at night and catch those planting false evidence of the blood lie. They are godless men, carrying bottles of blood or the body of a missing child. You must bring them unharmed to the authorities. Do you understand? Yes, said Gollum. By day you will be a servant in the synagogue, a shamash. Your name will be Joseph. Do you understand? Yes, said Gollum. He stared at the rabbi. How long shall I live? This startled Rabbi Lo. Until the Jews are no longer in danger, he replied. Then you will return to the earth from whence you came. Do you understand? Gollum said nothing. Do you understand, Joseph? repeated Rabbi Lo. Yes, said Gollum. So two questions I would use here would be, uh, do you think that the rabbi using the Gollum for a sort of justice is the right thing to do in this situation. And I would ask that for junior high to high school kids. And I would ask more younger kids, how do you think the Gollum feels taking all these commands and having to obey the rabbi, having just being brought into life? Gollum's arrival shocked Rabbi Lowe's people, but the rabbi calmed them. Joseph is the devoted servant of Israel, he declared. His great strength will be a blessing to us all, and so it was. Hardly a night passed that Gollum did not frustrate the efforts to spread the blood lie. One morning, Rabbi Lewis saw Gollum standing motionless in the lane. Joseph called the rabbi. Is all well? The sun is rising, said Gollum. The sky changes from black to blue. It is very beautiful. Rabbi Lewis sighed. How simple Gollum was. The smallest thing, the scent of a rose, the flight of a pigeon, filled him with wonder. Joseph, he replied, finish your work, then you can watch the sunrise. And I would ask uh, younger children, what kind of person do you think that Gollum is becoming? <clears throat> With the jail full of Gollum's arrests, the thoughtful people of Prague began to see blood lie for the slander it was. The enraged, this enraged the enemies of the Jews. They gathered a mob and marched to the ghetto, hoping to start a riot. Rabbi Lo summoned Gollum and hurried to the gates of the ghetto. The giant seemed taller than before. The rabbi could barely see the mark of truth on his forehead. With the hail of bricks and curses, the mob arrived and stormed the gates. The massive doors swayed but held. Gollum stood before them, the Jews outnumbered and weaponless, waited silently. Then a jeering cry went up. A battering ram had arrived. At each blow, wood splintered. Hinges wailed in protest. Still Gollum stood, but taller, much taller. Rabbi Lo could see him grow. Then the gates came crashing down. The mob poured into the ghetto. 
The first wave of attackers screamed in terror when they saw Gollum looming over them. With the back of his hand, he swept them aside. Still, the rabble surged in, propelled by those in black, those in back. Gollum took hold of the battering ram and, snapping it into rate great furrows in the crowd, Rabbi Lo covered his eyes. This was too much destruction. Too much. And then for a question here, I would ask, do you think that the rabbi is regretting his decision of using the Gollum? And that would be for middle school to junior high uh, grade level question. Leaving the dead and wounded, the mob fled in panic. Gollum threw the broken battering ram after them. He lifted and shattered gates and hung them back on their ruined hinges. Then he plodded back into the ghetto. The next day, Rabbi Lo was summoned to Prague Castle. What will you do now, demanded the emperor. Will you conquer the city with your giant and enslave us all? Would a people who celebrate the end of their own slavery wish to inflict slavery on others, replied the rabbi. No. The Gollum was created to protect the Jews. He has no other purpose. How long will the monster live, asked the emperor. Until the Jews are no longer in danger, answered Rabbi Lo. Then I guarantee the safety of your people, the emperor declared. Destroy Gollum. It will be done, said the rabbi. But if we are threatened again, Gollum will return stronger than before. And another question I would ask uh, more elementary and middle school children would be, do you think that the rabbi will really listen to the emperor? And what do you think that he would do? The rabbi found Gollum in the cemetery, gazing at the tombstones. Joseph, he said softly, come here. No, said Gollum. Why not, asked the rabbi. The Jews are safe, Gollum said. Now you will return me to the earth. Yes, said Rabbi Lo. Your purpose is not is at an end. Gollum regarded the setting sun. He raised his face. He raised his face to the fading light. Father, said Gollum, will I remember this? No, said Rabbi Lo. You will be clay. Gollum leaned down to him. Then I shall not obey you, he said. You have no choice, Joseph. The rabbi lashed out with his staff, erasing the first letter I left from the word on Gollum's forehead. At this, I met truth became met death. Um, and then I would ask a question for middle school to junior high kids. What do you think of Gollum at this point in the story? Gollum staggered and fell to his knees. Oh, father, he pleaded, do not do this to me. Even as he lifted his mighty hands, they were dissolving. Please, Gollum cried, please let me live. I did all that you asked of me. Life is so precious to me. With that, he collapsed into clay. And then, <clears throat> uh, I would ask pretty much any age group, what do you think about the rabbi's decision to end Gollum? All that night, Idzak Kohen and Yaakov Sassoon wheeled barrels of clay into the synagogue. They carried the clay to the attic. Rabbi Lo covered it with the old sitters, tattered prayer books of the congregation. Though Gollum had not truly been a man, they recited Kaddish, the prayer for the dead. Then they left, locking the door behind them forever. Since then, Gollum has slept the dreamless sleep of clay, but many say he could awaken, perhaps when the desperate need for justice is united with the holy purpose. Gollum will come to life once more. And for a final question, I would ask uh, pretty much any age group, uh, do you think or what do you think will become of the Jews now that Gollum is gone since they don't have a protector? And that's the end of the story.